Today's webinar is about uh, 8-bit microcontrollers and why they're still relevant. So the first um, uh, part of the presentation is uh, about uh, the why the microcontrollers with 8-bit architecture are still relevant. And I will show you some market trends and future trends. In the second part, um, I'll talk about two very interesting suppliers, Nuvoton and uh, Holtec. And in the third part, uh, um, I will uh, have a brief overview of the main MCUs, um, what these uh, um, suppliers offers, uh, offer right now, and especially general purpose MCUs by Nuvoton and special purpose MCUs by Holtec. As mentioned, the estimated time is about 30 minutes for this presentation. Before starting, a few words about Inaltec. Inaltec uh, is an independent uh, European distributor specialized in microcontrollers and IoT. Uh, it was founded in 1987 in Germany, so more than 30 years ago. Um, and if you want further information, please get in contact with our um, international offices. Uh, here you have the link with all the contacts. Okay. So up to um, 15 years ago, when we talked about 8-bit microcontroller, we thought about 8-bit microcontrollers with maybe a few 16-bit uh, DSP or special purpose microcontroller. Um, what really changed the market was the introduction um, by ARM of 30 of the core Cortex 32-bit uh, uh, architecture and the introduction by many uh, manufacturers of low-cost microcontrollers. What we uh, see now is that this trend is accelerated. So the 32-bit microcontrollers uh, um, are now really cheap. You can easily find microcontrollers with a price lower than $0.5. They have a good power consumption, especially the Core Cortex M0 Plus and M23. Uh, you can easily find microcontrollers with a uh, slip current of less than 200 nanoamps and operating current of 30 microamps per megahertz. But uh, all this trend um, will be e even more accelerated because recently there have been introduction of the RIX-5 architecture, which is an open architecture, so it doesn't require uh, royalties is scalable and so uh, this architecture will um, push uh, the price even lower and also the consumption can benefit from this new uh, paradigm. So this begs the question whether the 8-bit microcontrollers are still relevant. To put into, uh, uh, into perspective, we can take a look to, um, the, um, at the market uh, uh, of the microcontrollers. Here you see the North American market um, and even if the 32-bit uh, microcontrollers are increasing their share, uh, actually 8-bit and 16-bit microcontrollers are keeping the pace. And uh, in reality, there is also an increase uh, in the number of these microcontrollers. 8-bit microcontrollers have an expected CAGR of 4.4%. Uh, the demand depends on, on the region. Uh, you can see here that Europe and America have a strong um, demand of 8-bit microcontrollers, but the strongest comes from Asia and in particular from China. So why uh, is that? Why are 8-bit microcontrollers still uh, so used? Well, the reason is that 8-bit microcontrollers too benefit from uh, the process shrinkage. So since the 8-bit uh, core uh, needs a very small uh, area on the chip, there is the, a place to introduce uh, a lot of peripherals. Usually 8-bit microcontrollers have many, many peripherals. Uh, here you can see a few examples, for instance, um, sub-gigahertz radio or uh, motor control or even full sensor AFE, so sensor interface. Um, 8 bit microcontrollers have a very low power consumption. You can find uh, um, codes with uh, less than 100 nanoamps, so lower than 32 bit microcontrollers. And also, the operating current is very low, but also because the uh, switching frequency is lower. And the price uh, uh, can be very, very low. So, when uh, with a 32 bit microcontrollers, you can easily go under 0.5, but 
with an 8-bit microcontroller, you can go uh, under 0.2, which is less than a half. So many applications need, uh, need this kind of prices. So all these features um, uh, makes the, uh, make the 8-bit microcontrollers very suited for uh, many applications. Here I listed only a few. One of them are, for instance, the smart gadgets, where the, uh, for instance, the LCD peripheral and the low consumption are very useful um, so that the battery life can uh, extend for, for many, many years. Medical sensors are another big uh, place for 8-bit microcontrollers, uh, again, for their LCD driver. And especially, there is a strong trend towards uh, disposable medical devices, where the LCD uh, gives an easy to use uh, interface, an easy to read interface to all the professionals. And uh, the low cost and LCD peripheral makes it very, very interesting for disposable medical sensors. As mentioned, motor control. Uh, many 8 bit microcontrollers have motor control peripherals and smart uh, energy meter or uh, smart plugs, as you can see here. Um, we need to reduce our consumption for uh, environment concerns. Uh, and so having a sensor which uh, help us to, um, to have a look, um, to keep an eye on our consumption is very, uh, very useful. So which are the main MCU suppliers? Uh, here you see the, um, the MCU suppliers by uh, market share. I'm pretty sure all of you know all of these suppliers. Um, some of them uh, have uh, recently been noted for the dwindling and unstable supplies for both old and uh, new orders, and especially for 8-bit microcontrollers. Some of them even push uh, their customer to, to move toward the 32-bit architecture uh, because uh, um, many of 8-bit uh, microcontroller families will probably uh, go in end of life. So the trend that we see here is that many MCU suppliers are moving toward the higher margin businesses like the automotive sector or uh, the 32-bit architectures. And this also means that investments in the 8-bit segment are dwindling. So uh, current players uh, have an, uh, are in at, uh, at an advantage now uh, because they already done all their investment needed. So the question here is that it holds for, does it hold for um, every suppliers? And if you are doing uh, this webinar, the answer is clearly no. So today we will talk about Nuvoton and Holtec. Um, Nuvoton and Holtec are two Taiwanese manufacturers and they are really interesting right now for two main reasons. The first one is their uncommon uh, um, allocation policy with a strong focus on Europe and on uh, industrial and consumer market. And uh, this directly means shorter lead times um, and guaranteed uh, supply and delivery date, which right now is very, very important. And the other reason is that they are keeping investing in 8-bit uh, uh, microcontrollers. So today we will talk about general purpose MCUs by Nuvoton and special purpose MCUs by Alltech, but uh, it's just a division for this presentation Actually, both Nuvoton and Holtec have both general and special purpose MCUs. So here is a comparison between the two manufacturers. As you can see from the uh, first uh, figures, uh, um, Nuvoton is about twice as big as Holtec, even if Holtec has been founded um, in 1983, so it's uh, much older. They have been both, uh, um, they are both listed on the Taiwan Stock Exchange and they have both at the headquarters in Shinchu Science Park, where also TSMC is located. And TSMC is the biggest um, fab, semiconductor fab in the world. Nuvoton and Holtec have also different uh, shareholder structure. Nuvoton is owned by Winbond uh, with the 51% of the shares. And that's because Nuvoton is actually a spin-off of Winbond. It started as the same um, microcontroller spin-off, Winbond is mainly uh, known for its memory and uh, uh, playback device business. So that's why Winbond uh, still have um, still has 51% of Nuvoton's shares. 
while Holtec has a more diverse uh, shareholder structure and its uh, main shareholder is UMC with only the 9%. So they are similar but also different companies. The same figures are shown, uh, um, are reflected in the revenue. Um, as you can see, Nuvoton uh, had uh, about twice the revenue of Holtec up to 2020, where you see this big spike. And the spike is due to the fact that Nuvoton acquired Panasonic Semiconductor in 2021. So now Nuvoton is a much bigger company than it was before. And in fact, if we take again a look to the um, MCU market share, but this time up to the top 10 manufacturers, we see that Nuvoton is actually in the, the seventh on this list. So it's right uh, below uh, TI. Holtec uh, is a little bit uh, smaller. It has a share, estimated share of about 1%. It's not on this list, but as you can see, it's not so far, for instance, from C-Lab. So they are both um, big companies. Okay, so now, now let's start uh, with the uh, Novoton um, 8 bit microcontrollers, so the new microcontrollers by Novoton. All Novoton's 8 bit microcontrollers are based on the 8051 architecture, and they are divided into two families the MS51 family, which is an um, industrial family with a low pin count and a very low cost, and the ML family, sorry the ML family, where L stands for low power. And uh, this family has lower consumption, but also um, additional peripherals like uh, LCD uh, driver and uh, touch. So here is an overview of the first one, the MS51. <clears throat> As you can see, this component has a um, slip, um, a high slip current with nine microamps, so it's not a low power device, but it has a wide range of input voltage and a wide range of temperature. Uh, what's interesting here is that even if it's a very low cost microcontroller, it has a pretty good ADC with 12 bit at 50 kilo sample per second. And it's available in uh, many different uh, memory size and packages. But as mentioned, it's a low pin count, um, low pin count family, and it reaches up to 32 uh, pins. It's meant for industrial application. The ML family is a bit, little bit uh, bigger. Um, so the base family is the ML51. Um, and very similar, there's the ML54, which is uh, yeah, the same, but with the LCD driver and the 56 with both LCD driver and uh, uh, touch peripheral. So here in green, you see the differences be be um, between the ML51 and the MS51. As you can see here, the slip current is less than one microamp, so it's a low power device and the voltage range goes even below, um, even lower to 1.8 volts. So it works also with low voltages. This family has different memory sizes, but it also reaches 64 pins. So there are many, uh, it has also bigger packages than the MS51. The ML54 is, very similar, but as mentioned, it has the LCD driver with a few LCD segment options. And also this one reaches um, 64 uh, pins. Uh, with the enable LCD, it can reach a consumption of two microamps. So it's a very low consumption if you have the LCD enabled. Well, the last family is the ML56, uh, which in addition to all what we have said, uh, also has uh, 14 touch keys. A brief, a uh, few words about the, the ecosystem. So to program 8-bit microcontrollers by Nuvoton, you can choose between ER and Kale, but it also has, uh, it also has many programmers. You can see here the debugger and programmer for development and the production, uh, um, the production programmer below. And there are also many evaluation kits available, so please get in contact if you need further information. 
Okay, now let's jump to Holtec uh, 8-bit MCUs. I will mainly speak about special purpose MCUs here. So one of them uh, is the HT66L24, and it's uh, an LCD um, microcontroller. It's very interesting because it has a very low standby current with 80 nanoamps and a very low uh, conversion current. Um, so the ADC can work with less than 100 microamps, um, microamps at 3 volt, and it makes this microcontroller very suitable for disposable medical device, but also smart segment, a smart gadget. Um, another interesting uh, microcontroller is the BS84, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, interesting because it uh, also have uh, the touch keys uh, up to 12, so a little bit less than uh, uh, Nuvoton's one. Um, and uh, as you can see here, uh, Holtex uh, uh, microcontrollers are available only in one uh, memory size. Holtec is very famous for its uh, um, radio uh, sub gigahertz uh, uh, microcontrollers and modules. And so here I will show you a few um, transmit uh, a transmitting microcontroller like like the BC66 F2123. Uh, it uh, support, uh, uh, supports the most common sub gigahertz frequency you can see below, and both OOK and FSK. Holtec also has the receiving MCUs, uh, the 2332 and 2342, uh, covering the same frequencies. And uh, they are both uh, FCC and uh, ATSI compliant. And uh, it's very interesting uh, that they also uh, have available modules to help uh, uh, getting started or to use it in production if it's easier for you. In this case, there are a few uh, memory options, as you can see in the graph above. Um, then there is a full uh, family of uh, measuring uh, uh, or sensor MCUs, like the BH66 F5350, and uh, uh, they are characterized by um, high-resolution ADC, so 24-bit ADC. They even have a 12-bit uh, DAC. And um, there, there is also an OPA rail-to-rail -rail inside of them. So they're very useful for uh, sensor interfaces, so AFE. And another special one is the BH67 F2142, which has an integrated resistor uh, resistance to frequency converter. So and um, it uh, has an LCD driver and, uh, and works uh, uh, at a very low voltage which uh, makes it suitable for single cell uh, uh, battery cell application and for a resistive sensor. So this also is very suited for uh, disposable medical devices, for instance. Holtec has MCUs targeted at smoke alarms, and that's because they have a piezoelectric horn driver inside. There are many options. Here you see a few of them, for instance, the code with the three um, has an integrated 12 volt boost, so it's useful for uh, low voltage battery application. There is one with a sub gigahertz transmitter and um, transceiver, and so on. So, if you have a small alarm application, probably Holtec has the best uh, fit for uh, the best match. Um, Holtec has, all, have all, has also a few fire protection MCUs, <clears throat> and that's because these MCUs um, have a power line transceiver integrated with uh, excellent ESD. Um, so there are a few of them here. You, you can see the 3241 and 3543. So these are both targeted at fire protection. Um, another interesting uh, microcontrollers, microcontroller is the BA45 uh, uh, F6640, and it's targeted to PIR or microwave. That's because it has an integrated uh, AFE with auto conversion, which consists in uh, um, consists in a, a timer and a uh, finite state machine, which uh, helps directly reading the output of a PIR 
sensor. It also has a temperature sensor and two operational amplifiers and, and NDOs. Also for this one uh, are available modules with the integrated sensor, which can uh, uh, help you uh, start fast your application. And the last one uh, I will show you here today is the HT45F85. Uh, and this is an MCU target at battery protection. And that's because it has an integrated battery monitor with an accuracy of 24 milliamps. And it has an integrated NMOS gate driver, which can help the discharge and charge of the battery. So it's meant for uh, lithium polymer uh, batteries. And uh, yeah, if you have uh, this kind of application, this MCU is very, very specific. Also for Holtec, um, there are IDEs. The standard one is the IDE 3000, which is free to use. And uh, Holtec also has, has um, a few of what they call workshops, which are um, software tools uh, which can help you develop, for instance, um, sub gigahertz applications or touch application and so on. And also Holtec uh, has a few programmers. The E-Link is the programmer debugger. Uh, the E-Writer Pro is for, uh, um, for programming in production, but if you have a, a, a real production, you probably need the Gang Writer that you can see on the, uh, on the right here. So a brief recap, today we talked about Nuvoton and Holtec, which are both uh, a Taiwanese uh, semiconductor companies. They're interesting because of their, their uh, allocation policy is focused on Europe and industrial and consumer. So it means short lead times uh, and guaranteed supply. In this presentation, we talk about general purpose MCUs by Nuvoton, which have a fair amount of memory and have uh, all, all of them have uh, all the serial peripherals, but they do not have EEPROM. They only have uh, um, a flash um, emulation. While uh, about Holtec, we, we talk about its uh, special purpose MCUs. Holtec does have true EEPROM. So if you need EEPROM, um, then Holtec may be the best choice for you. And uh, Holtex MCUs usually have a, a very special peripheral. 